Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 2D platformer tutorial series. Last time, we got the basic framework of our game up. So we can run, and we see a level that we created. We have it stored right here in... This is the wrong sh folder. <laughs> right here, in this folder, we can see we have a test level that we created. And, what do you know? <laughs> our game loads it. You know what, screw it. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna do a second take there. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> and so, what we're gonna be doing today is we are gonna be extending this. Because right now we're loading a level, but we're hard coding everything that goes into the level. This load entity function right here, if we want to add more stuff, like say, a lava trap, well, we'd have to manually go in, rewrite a whole bunch of code to detect Okay, if the B is the value of the lava trap, then we'll create a new type of sprite with new parameters and... Bleh, no. We don't want that. What we want is we want some sort of, well, entity specification. And that time, that is the right folder. As we sort of described here. As we mentioned, it's just going to be a JSON file describing, well, for each blue value that we're interested in, what sort of entity it should represent. And that's what we're going to start putting together in this video. Let's begin. So, JSON. How does it work? What does it do? How is this mysterious JSON file going to replace everything we've done in the load entity function? Well, if you look, this is a test file that comes with the platformer. This is just a basic example of what the syntax of a JSON file is like. And so, this is sort of how it feels like. You have these things between brackets, which are called objects in JSON lingo. And you can think of it, for example, here, saying my object 2 has all of these properties. So it has property test 4, which is the value of null, test 2, which is the value of string 1, 2, 3. That's a very literal and technical way of looking at it, but that's really all there is to a JSON file. And I think you'll get a much better understanding rather than hearing me babble about it, if I just show you. So let's begin. Let's create entities.json. This is our empty JSON file. So, just open it in your favorite text editor, create two brackets to create the master object. I don't think it's actually called that, but I just like the name master object. And what we're going to be doing here is, again, replacing the load entity function. So everything in our master object are just going to be the numbers, what various blue values we're interested in. So for example, blue value 1. This is, right now, is our wall. So, it's an object. Okay, so what's the entity for blue value 1 going to be like? Well, right now, as you see here in our code, all we really say for blue value 1 is it has a sprite. And, what well, more specifically, it has a sprite using testwall.png as, well, the file for the sprite. So let's go ahead and specify that. So it's going to have one special component that makes it entity1. That's a sprite component. And this sprite component, it has a special feature that it has the file name is testwall.png and uh, yeah that's pretty much all there is to our, our whole JSON file setup. This is how we're going to be specifying things. So let's go for another example before I really dive into how this is going to be working. So entity 255, that's the other entity we have here, and that's our player. What makes this so special? Well, it also has a sprite component. And what does that sprite component have? The only thing that makes that sprite component special is its file name, which again is, in this case, testplayer.png. So hopefully, even before I've really explained anything, you're starting to get a feel for how this works. And just in case you aren't, here it is. In our master object, we're just going to be listing all the different blue values. Those are, we're going to be creating JSON objects for them. So in the JSON objects, 
what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating objects for every component that makes up that object. So, for example, right now, all we really have are sprite components, so we're defining a sprite component for both object 1 and or entity 1 and entity 255. But as we start adding more different types of components to our whole game, then we'll start specifying more things here, like maybe entity 255 has an inventory component, because, you know, it's a player, so he has an inventory and he can pick up stuff. Or, I don't know. And maybe entity 1... Uh, I don't really know what else entity 1 would have, actually. It's pretty much just going to have a sprite for the remainder of the, this game development process. But yeah. Oh, and one thing I forgot. You do want to have commas between your list of JSON objects, so just, just keep that in mind. Otherwise, you will get errors. But yeah, this is really going to be our entities.json file for the time being. It's short, it's simple, and best of all, it's going to be really easy to start adding on and updating this to have, well, more and more interesting features as the development process goes on. Alright, so now let's make use of our new entity specification. So in platform level, we're going to need to take in a JSON file. It was just JSON for the entity spec, because otherwise, how on earth are we going to know about it? So hit Control shift o to import that. It should be importing engine.parsing.json.json, not other, some other bizarre, wacky nonsense thing. And the other thing we're going to need here is we're going to need a private JSON for the entity spec. So we know, we can know about this entity specification outside the constructor. So this.entity spec is going to equal entity spec. Mind-bending coding, I know. Now in platform C, this does mean we're going to need to change the way we create the platform level. And unfortunately, this means we're going to need to hard code for the time being. This won't stay like this, I promise, but for now, we're just going to create a new JSON with a hard-coded file. And since our file is in, well, the resource folder to entities.json, that's what we're going to hard code. Dot slash res slash entities.json. Make sure you spell this correctly, or it's going to crash as soon as you try and run it. Speaking of, actually, let's try and run it. So good, I've typed it correctly. Now if you type this correctly and it still crashes, it's possible that your entities.json file has some sort of typo in here somewhere. Especially if you're getting a parse exception. So make sure this is the same. And keep in mind, this file is on GitHub, so you can just download it if you don't want to bother with that nonsense. And there you go. So with that, let's actually change the load entity function itself. So we can finally say screw you to all this hard-coded nonsense here, because we're going to be doing stuff with JSON. And your first question here probably is, how do we use this wacky JSON nonsense? Well, in entity spec, the only method we really care about is the get method. And that gets us pretty much everything in the JSON file. It gets us the master JSON object. And unfortunately, there isn't a really good way to automatically convert the JSON types into the Java types. It can still figure out what types it is, and if we try to say, oh, the master object's actually a Boolean, it's going to throw an exception and crash if we don't catch it. But it, we can't just say git and have it, it automatically convert it to a boolean without this extra dot as step. Or object. Whatever. <laughs> so yeah, it's an object. And there we go. Now we have the map of all the JSON stuff. And really, what we want here is we want to, in this j the master object, let me just bring up the file to show you, in this master object, what we want is this right here, the number. We want to get the B value, so that we know, hey, what object are we talking about? So I'm going to get out of the empty string, and I'm going to concatenate the blue value to it. So that should be getting us, well, whatever object is specified by the number, if any. So I'm going to say JSON value, I believe it is. Yeah. JSON value, entity, well, maybe entity's not the best name. 
I'll call it entities. <laughs> I can't call it that either. Uh, okay. Description, sure. <laughs> Why not? And if entity descript. <laughs> if this is null, was what I'm trying to get out here. If this is null, then at this point we should just return because it's something not specified. So, yes, I want to import the JSON value. And if we do have the entity description, this is where the fun stuff starts. This is where we get to load our entity based on the description we provide in the JSON file. So you might be wondering, how do we do that? And it's actually somewhat tricky. What we want is we want here, what we want is we want an iterator that goes through every component we specify so that we can add them all to the entity. So we can do that actually. We can create an iterator to an entry of strings and JSON values. I'm going to call it. And this is going to be equal to entity, screw that, entity description dot, excuse me, of our first as object, because it should be an object. If not, we've written the JSON file wrong. And what we want here is we want the entry set. This gives us a set of everything. Well, first off, Control Shift O to import stuff. Ooh, dear. Java.util.map.entry is the one you want, and Java.util.iterator is the one you want. And this is gonna ah here. Sorry, I forgot. Dot iterator. There. <laughs> so this will give us an iterator that can go through every pair of well strings and JSON objects that we have here. So while it.has next, so while there's still stuff to go through, we're going to be adding everything there. So I'm going to have entry of string to JSON value. I'm going to call sure entry it.next. There we go. Oh, forgot a comma, excuse me. And I'm also going to have a map of string to JSON value. Then I'm going to call parameters. And this is going to equal entry dot get value. And oh yeah, import map. There we go. Entry dot get value. Dot as object. <laughs> there we go. Because it should. Well, should it be an object? Yeah, it should, because we have sprite and we have the object containing all its parameters. So yes, it should be object. And this is what we want for every entry in the set. We want, well, the entry itself and uh, all the parameters. And now, really, it just depends on what what the entry is. So I'm going to do a switch on entry.get key. And if this is a string, for example, a string, <laughs> a sprite, for example, we're going to be doing something a lot like what we've already done. We're going to be Comment that out, or uncomment that out. We first need to import sprite component again because apparently it unimported it. So we're going to create a new sprite component with everything, and the only thing that's missing here is the sprite name. So I'm going to put this on a new line. That's in our parameters. Parameters.get file name. Because as you can see in our JSON file, for this file name, we specify well what this file name is. And we're giving me an error for some reason. Because I have to say this is a string, specifically. So there we go. We've got the sprite component thing. That's all we really have for right now, so we can go ahead and leave this. Let's just build and run and see if this works. Which it does not, because I forgot something. With If it's a player, we need to specifically assign that. And we're going to have a good way to do this in a, a little bit, but right now I'm just going to hard code this if b equals 255 is equal to, with two equals, excuse me, <laughs> then I'm going to assign player to, to e. So now this should work. And there we go. We're loading everything from the JSON file. And to prove to you this is really working, I'm not pulling some wacky nonsense. Let's change the player sprite to bricks.jpg, which is something that came with the resources. If I do that and run, 
Nope. No change to the code. But we have a new player sprite. Isn't that awesome? So there we go. I'm going to change it back because I like our little square... Cir square. Our circular dude. A little bit better than the bricks. And there we go. So now we can really specify anything we want in this nice convenient entity specification. And I think I'm going to call it there for this video. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And I'll see you next time.